Welcome to the Texas News Podcast, where we dive into all things Texas politics and the future of independence in the state of Texas. On today's show, we're going to be discussing whether or not Texas Governor Greg Abbott is quietly preparing for Texas to be an independent nation. As you may have noticed, Abbott's been going on several international trips lately that could indicate that Texas is on the horizon. And we're going to give you a deep dive, so don't go anywhere. So this really is the question. Is Governor Greg Abbott preparing Texas to leave the union? Uh, It it is a a question that was posed to him, I think, by 60 Minutes. We talked about it on last week's podcast, and uh, it is definitely on the minds of a lot of people. There seem to be a lot of interesting moves being made by Governor Abbott in the state of Texas that may indicate something is afoot. We're going to be talking a lot about that uh, in this episode of the podcast. Plus, we're going to cover uh, some of the other hot Texas news topics that are pertinent to you. Uh, in fact, one of the ones that broke loose, and we were actually going to do the entire podcast about this one, uh, but you know, we got to talk about this Abbott thing. But it, it is revealed finally in public beyond just the Twitter files that the government is indeed spying on your social media and not just your social media, your bank account. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, Additionally, a couple of updates in the runoff election. Uh, We're going to be reacting to some real interesting predictive programming. In fact, in one of the previous episodes of the podcast, we talked about the upcoming movie that's releasing in April called Civil War and how it talks about Texas being an independent nation. And uh, there was a mention of some other things that have happened or are happening, uh, fictionally speaking, that may be serving as predictive programming. But I'm actually going to take you all the way back uh, to, uh, I think, the same, pretty much the same year that the TNM was founded, back in 2005, to show you how long this has been coming. Uh, and additionally, we're going to wrap up. We're going to talk about some new things happening on the TNM website. So uh, this is going to be jam-packed, but look, let's not bury the lead. Let's go back and ask the question, is Governor Greg Abbott preparing for Texas? Well, I'm going to lay out some information for you. I'm not going to call it a case because I'm not trying to make the case one way or the other, but I'm going to put out the dots and I'm going to let you connect them. Now, if you will recall, when we talked about uh, several podcast episodes back, we talked about when Governor Abbott uh, actually implemented the the border protection plan down there in Eagle Pass. Some people call it a political stunt. I call it a Gonzalez moment, a.k.a. referring back to the Texas Revolution. Um, but many of you will recall when the Supreme Court case came down uh, related to the, the razor wire issue that was also secondary to what was happening in Eagle Pass, Governor Greg Abbott just happened to be in India, and and a lot of people were scratching their heads, like, why is Abbott in India? And, you know, there for those of us who sort of follow these sorts of things, it was not really a revelation. I mean, it just happened to be poor timing that all of this broke loose while he was in India, but him being overseas and interfacing with governments in other countries was no shocker. Uh, In fact, it's been happening uh, quite a bit over the last few years, but it's happening now at a quite an accelerated pace. So, you know, not only did you have the mission recently to India, but I'm going to even roll it back a little bit further. Um, You had uh, diplomat, I'm not going to say diplomatic, but you had meetings and agreements uh, that were signed between Texas and France, Texas and Finland. Uh, You've had recent meetings with India, Australia, UK, uh, one of the foreign ministers, I believe, from Germany. Uh, It it just seems that here recently in the last few weeks, last couple of months, this is beginning to happen at an accelerated pace. Now, I'm not going to make an assertion. I'm going to dispel a rumor right now, okay? Uh, Nothing is coming out of these meetings that would indicate foreign recognition of Texas status 
or that Texas is asking for that sort of thing. I don't want people to get hyperbolic about this, okay? But publicly, what's happening is they are touted as economic missions. Now, uh, the one recently to the UK, which we'll be talking about here in a moment, was actually funded by 501c3, the Texas Economic Development Corporation. But Abbott went with a, a host of other dignitaries to the United Kingdom uh, for the purpose of uh, hammering out what was called a statement of mutual cooperation. Okay. Now, what's interesting about this, and I, and I pulled uh, Greg Abbott's press release about this, but he he flat states that on March the 13th, they signed a statement of mutual cooperation with the United Kingdom Secretary of State for Business and Trade, Kimmy Batenock, I, I'm not even going to pronounce it, while in London on an economic development trip to, here you go, deepen the strong partnership between the United Kingdom and Texas, encourage expanded trade in critical industries, and attract new job-creating business investments to Texas. And so they actually held the signing ceremony at Number 10 Downing Street, right, the residence of the Prime Minister. Uh, there are pictures flying around of Abbott with Rishi Sunak, the, the Prime Minister of, of Great Britain, uh, with David Cameron, who is their foreign minister, and also uh, the one who was, when he was Prime Minister, uh, called for the Brexit vote, okay? But it's quite interesting what he specifies in here. He, he touts this this massive um, economic agreement. But the interesting thing is, when you actually look at the statement of mutual cooperation, uh, down there in Section 10, Clause 2, it says, the SMC is solely an expression of the participant's intention to establish a mutually beneficial relationship and is not an international agreement or treaty, and as such does not create legally binding rights or obligations under international or domestic law. Now, that statement is, is kind of is quite interesting because it's very clear that the statements of mutual cooperation are not to be viewed as treaties or uh, any type of legally binding international agreement. However, uh, it is not, all is not, as Greg Abbott said in his press release, because it was not just about economics, right? Uh, it, it specified several areas where there would be uh, enhanced or favored mutual cooperation. So these are the, the public documents that have come out, the press release, the actual uh, document itself. Uh, I mean, there's just so, so much that they can put out publicly. But I think the question becomes really two things. Number one is, what didn't make the documents? What are these conversations like? Because Texas being the eighth largest economy in the world, the United Kingdom is the number one uh, source of foreign investment to industry and jobs here in Texas, uh, something that was touted pretty heavily in the press release. But I think we have to ask ourselves, is there something else afoot here? Okay. But I want to draw your attention back to the 60 Minutes interview that uh, we highlighted on the last podcast episode, where in the context of what Abbott's doing on the border, the reporter who fumbled the football in the interview asked the question, uh, do you believe that Texas can secede from the union? and then immediately said, is that what this is? To which Greg Abbott responded, that is a false narrative, right? In the sense that what he's doing on the border is not about Texas withdrawing from the union. But I think a case can be made that uh, what he said there uh, might be to the point, especially given what he followed up with, it may not be about Texas leaving the union, but it might be about taking some of those initial steps just in case Greg Abbott feels forced to do so. Now, granted, Texas over time has had these economic quote unquote missions uh, to these other countries. I, I listed off France. I listed off Finland. Uh, those are two countries where these, uh, these agreements 
these um, where these uh, statements of mutual cooperation uh, have been signed um, previously, right? But there is a difference in that there had been quite a bit of time spaced out. All of a sudden now, in the last two months, on right on the heels of what's happening in Eagle Pass, the discussion about um, you know whether or not states can leave the union, you know, go back to the infamous Nikki Haley question that we uh, took a deep dive into some time back. Uh, you know, you look at the delivery of 170,000 petition signatures to the governor's office. The fact that, but for a a rogue chairman of the Republican Party. Texans would have been voting in this in March, right on on the March fifth ballot. Uh, take take the fact that you had all of these Texas first candidates get across the finish line, and and you know you're going to wind up, you know it's it's almost a certainty at this point that you're going to get the Texas Independence Referendum Act filed in the next session. You take all of these things in total. And all of a sudden now, this acceleration of meetings with foreign leaders takes on a whole different characteristic, more than perhaps this idea that, well, you know, it's just a a friendship tour. It may be that. You know, it may be, look, let's go sign these agreements. Remember, it says that they're not legally binding. So what is indeed the real purpose? Well, I'm going to hit you with something. And... um, this is, for me, always one of the fun things. I've got to, got to get it here because I want to, I, I want to be very clear uh, about this because we're about to get really deep into something that most Texans don't spend a lot of time thinking about, right? Uh, and that is this idea of what is a state. Okay, now we know that. We are called the state of Texas. We know that the United States of America is a union of states. We know that the word state, uh, it, it appears in, in actually the, uh, the Declaration of Independence of the 13 colonies from Great Britain, where they declare themselves, each individually, the 13, as states and refer to Great Britain as a state. Right, something we don't think about very often is what is this thing uh, about a state? Notice it doesn't call the the name of of the United States of America is not the United State of America. Okay, it's the United States. It is a federative body of individual sovereign states, states that have their own independent and sovereign character. Now, I know this this gets a bit wonkish, right? But I want you to understand that that words matter. When you're dealing in the issue of 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 a state or a country, whatever you want to call it, um, becoming self-governing, exercising their right of self-determination, understanding what its status currently is matters. And it matters because there is this thing under international law, international precedent, whatever you want to call it. Um, but, but it really boils down to this idea of legitimacy, right? Is this a legitimate government? Is this a legitimate state, right? Is this, you know, th- this is something that, that really has been hotly debated or discussed for well over 100 years. And literally 90 years ago, there was a uh, an agreement in uh, Montevideo, Uruguay. Okay, now in Montevideo, they they held what was essentially a, a, a Congress of American States or a Conference of American States. That it was actually the seventh international conference of American States, is what it was called. And essentially, what they wanted to do was come up with a framework so that everyone could kind of understand what everyone else was, right? What is the definition of a state? What qualifies as a state? Because until you until you can define the parties to an agreement, it's very difficult to lay out the idea of, of what the responsibilities and the rights of those people as part of that agreement are. You know, you look at, at any contract. 
it specifies who the players are. And if you can't define who is and who isn't and, and have some sort of objective criteria to say, look, or subjective criteria, excuse me, if you, you can't have some concrete criteria uh, to determine who is a who is a real player or a real party, then uh, you know you're going to have a hard time. The, the, essentially, the agreement will not be worth the paper that it's written on. Now, what's interesting about the Montevideo Convention is that it was really the first time in international law, right? In any type of, and, and when I say international law, guys, I'm not talking about the United Nations. I'm basically talking back all the way to Vattel and the laws of nations, right? When you're talking about becoming a nation among nations, you got to start looking at, at the broader perspective and understanding what all of these things mean. Uh, you can see principles right out of Vattel's laws of nations right in uh, the Declaration of Independence that was penned by Thomas Jefferson. So some of you out there may say, well, we don't care about that. Well, you need to. Because it really is is important to the ultimate success of Texas becoming an independent nation. But what was what again, what was very interesting about the Montevideo Convention was that it it established a four part criteria for defining a state. And this is what it said just bullet points it said that the con- it says the convention stipulated that all states were equal sovereign units okay so when you hear me talk about a nation among texas becoming a nation among nations or you hear me use the sam houston quote of texas will again lift its head and stand among the nations it essentially establishes this principle that goes all the way back that there is no such thing as a subservient sovereign unit, right? Um, you, you can you can be a, a state or you could be a province or a colony or any of those other things. But w- once you elevate to that statehood, now all of a sudden you say we're an equal. We, you know, you, we, you may ha- be bigger, you may have more military, you may have more budget, but in the interest of sovereignty, we are equals, not One, you know, holding a station above the other, but we're equals, okay? But here's what it says, and here's the four-part criteria. It says that a state, in its definition, consists of, it must have a a permanent population, a.k.a. they're not wandering, it it is, you know, they're they're not a a diaspora, Um, you know, they have, it has a permanent population, they have defined territorial boundaries, so you've got a people, you've got a territory or country, as I like to call it. Uh, you have a government, right, which means you have the ability to uh, govern yourselves, right? There's some sort of government in place. And then the fourth thing is an ability to enter into agreements with other states. Now, why this applies and why I think it's important for us to take a look at What's happening with Abbott in relation to all of these uh, these mutual co- these statements of mutual cooperation, whatever you want to call them, is that for a long time there have been people that have been obviously on the bandwagon of everything should be consolidated in Washington D.C. and we're all just vassals, right? But there has been this contention on the part of the opposition to say, well, yeah, Texas is a state, but not like that, right? It's a state, but not really a state. It's just the name, right? Well, an interesting thing. I mean, you could, you could go attack this constitutionally. You could go into history, you know, you could go look at the foundation of the union, but, but I like to fast forward things, right? I don't live in the 18th or 19th century, neither do you. Uh, and, and I think it's important for us to see how those things we talk about there play out in the modern day. Now, this, this criteria from the Montevideo convention has essentially become the global standard for defining what a state is and what a state isn't. 
Now, I'm not saying that that, that that disparages anyone's case toward independence, right? I think, I think, you know, Catalonia probably would be upset if, if I were doing that. And I'm not trying to do that. This is not about the individual cases around the world, but what it is about is about looking at Texas through this lens and showing more recent uh, evidence, not only that Texas is definitely a state within the context of, of international law and understanding, but that Greg Abbott's actions very likely, whether conscious or unconscious, are directly related to the fourth provision, right? So if you look at Monte Video, interestingly enough, the first three parts, the first three parts of the test are not in dispute whatsoever. Texas has a permanent population. We have defined territorial boundaries. And if anyone doesn't believe me, uh, go down and and buy your Texas-shaped waffle iron and uh, stuff your mouth full of waffles and don't say anything, Right. Uh, or, or go down to HEB and get your Texas-shaped potato chips, or look at the signs when you leave out uh, of our boundaries that say, uh, you know, welcome to Oklahoma on one side, welcome to Arkansas on one, welcome to Louisiana on another. Y- you get the point, right? That, that That's not under contention. And then the third, obviously, is we have a government. This is a government that is uh, that is elected under a constitution that we have here in Texas. It's not appointed by some foreign ruler uh, or the bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. We have a government. So the first three parts of the test are not under dispute, not in, in remotely. But what has been interesting has been the opposition loves to uh, basically uh, attack us on, on the fourth part and say, well, wait a minute. Texas doesn't have the ability to uh, write treaties with other countries, and that is true. 100% that is true. By virtue of our membership in the union, that is a delegated power to the federal government under the the entire guise of having a a common foreign policy, okay? But it didn't say treaties, it said agreements, right? Or to execute all of these types of relations. And, and I think in, in the broader sense, that's uh, effectively what it means. Does a state or a, a, a would-be state have the ability to engage in, in uh, agreements or um, relationships with other states? And I would posit that Greg Abbott's recent fl- flurry of activity internationally is, in fact, that very thing. Now, granted, the statement had to say that it was the, the statement of, of mutual cooperation. It was not an international agreement or a treaty. They had to stipulate that, right? But does it necessarily mean that? it flunks the Montevideo test, at least the fourth part of the criteria. And I would posit that it doesn't. And and I would also say that, in fact, if it did not, and again, let me me stop there. I think you can make the case under the 10th Amendment that, you know, the, the reserved powers or those that were granted to the federal government are delegated sovereignty. Texas has the ability to do it. We just, by virtue of our membership, have said, now you go do it, right? Very similar to to what happens in the EU. Each country in the European Union can still have its diplomats, its embassies, and and do those things individually, but they have to do it within the confines of their membership in the European Union. So to a certain extent, they have delegated a portion of their uh, their treaty-making ability, whether it be trade treaties or whatever, to this particular body, to the EU, although they do reserve some of it. In Texas' case, as part of the union, the way that the Constitution was constructed, the whole Megillah gets kicked, except maybe it doesn't. Maybe Texas doesn't have treaty-making power. Maybe we can't enter into international agreements, 
right? So, you know, none of these sort of multilateral agreements or conventions to sign on. But the question is, does this particularly qualify? I, I would say that it does. But does it also make the case that with this flurry of activity, that the, the governor of Texas may be laying the groundwork for future diplomatic relations when Texas becomes independent? Because, you know, you go back to uh, any of the conversations that, that you hear with some of these, these academics or people that are studied in international law. Go look at the work of Dr. Matt Quartrip in, in that book, uh, I Want to Break Free. He talks about this idea of recognition and legitimacy. And so while this is not explicitly recognition, the fact is, is that Texas has definitely shown that it has the ability to conduct these types of foreign relations to effectively operate as a nation among nations. And, and folks, you take that as part of the whole, and, and I think suddenly you can start answering for yourself whether or not Greg Abbott, consciously or unconsciously, is preparing for Texas to leave the union. You know, you go back to the last session of the legislature and you had a piece of legislation filed that would have effectively monetized the Texas Gold Depository, where Texas would be able to issue a currency based off of deposits of precious metals in the depository to begin to lay that framework for Texas to have a stable currency. You look at the fact that Texas is at this very moment deploying its own Texas military department to enforce the law on the border where the federal government has failed. So if if anyone out there, and, and many of you have heard me speak, have heard me say this, anyone who asks, well, when is Texas going to happen? The answer is open your eyes. It's happening right now. So I think it's worth a watch. You know, I, I, I will tell you the, the, uh, the feeds on X, formerly known as Twitter, of Governor Abbott and the Secretary of State have been extremely instructive uh, about some of these meetings that they are holding with these foreign dignitaries to strengthen ties, whether they be economic ties or cultural ties. Um, I, I think it's only a short step from there, from the point when Texans vote for Texas to become an independent nation before Texas has the ability to send out ambassadors to these other countries to seek out their recognition of our independence. Uh, and the groundwork is already being laid. The fact that you can see all of these uh, Texas elected officials hurriedly and excitedly snapping their picture in front of the building that used to be the embassy of the Republic of Texas in London, I think is quite telling. So uh, definitely something to keep your eye on. Now, uh, let me let me move on because I want to make sure that we hit everything today. News broke last week. Uh, Jim Jordan, uh, Congressman Jim Jordan has got a, a committee going in the House where he's discussing the weaponization of the Department of Justice. I mean, I'm sure it's got some other functions of that, but that's exactly what's going on. And in the midst of all of, of the testimony that's happening there, news broke that, indeed, the federal government confirmed now, no longer a conspiracy theory, no longer, you know, now look, we know the government's been spying on everyone. Edward Snowden taught us that. And he's not the only one, you know, the, the, uh, the, you know, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. I mean, you've had whistleblowers come out and frankly, we didn't even need the whistleblowers. I'm pretty sure we all knew that the government was conducting mass surveillance on its citizens, but confirmed in that hearing was the existence of something called the domestic security Alliance council, where you have the FBI and the department of Homeland security cooperating or colluding with social media companies, financial institutions, to effectively uh, vacuum up as much information about everyone as they possibly can. In fact, uh, there is something called the DSAC portal where they can, the social media companies can go post information. Uh, you know, they can 
the the FBI, the DHS can request. I mean, it, it does everything. But but let me tell you what came out. So there were, in fact, criteria released by the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI, and this is this is what it said. They're building, they're conducting surveillance and building profiles for Americans, not just Texans, in this secret portal called DSAC for those who oppose firearms restrictions, lockdowns, vaccine mandates, and or support border security, and they are effectively labeling them as domestic extremists. Now, according to this report, they are working with 650 or more companies to gather data on every one of us. And how they do it is in cooperation with these merchant category codes when you use your credit cards. If you shop at, say, a Bass Pro Shop or a Cabela's or Amazon and you purchase firearms or you on Amazon, let's say you purchase religious text, you're getting flagged. That information, according to this report, is going straight back into this portal and the federal government is developing a profile on you. Now, let's understand that this was, if this had been talked about, well, I mean, it was. It's been, this has been talked about for years. But now it's not just one of those things that the opposition loves to paint. These centralists love to paint as uh, a conspiracy theory, for people who wear, you know, tinfoil hats and, you know, they love to marginalize. And, and let's remember, yesterday's conspiracy theory is, is tomorrow's fact at this point. I mean, I, I don't know that any of you have an imagination that can really, truly imagine how bad it is. However bad you think it is, it is much worse, okay? Um, but additionally, beyond those merchant codes, and beyond the social media, because we know that was happening with the twi- when the Twitter files dump happened, we knew that collusion was happening between social media platforms and, and the DHS and the FBI. Uh, but now they are really tying this in, not just to merchants, but also to these banks and, and to these financial institutions and to, to you know, all these fintech companies. And essentially what's happening is they are, when, when some, something is flagged, you purchase a Bible or a religious text, which, you know, I mean, that, that uh, I, I'm toast if that's the case. Um, but, you know, if you're expressing any of these, these uh, unpopular, I say unpopular, unpopular with the political establishment viewpoints, they are in fact able to take that information, create a profile, and then keep tabs on your dissent from the party line. So again, it's no longer conspiracy theory. It wasn't a conspiracy theory before. It was a fact. It was just marginalized by a bunch of people who either are benefiting from this or just too stupid to realize how deep in the noose their neck is, right? But here it is. Right here in in this congressional committee, shouted in front of everyone, and you got to wonder, how in the world is this not front page news, you know, consuming the 24-hour news cycle? How is, how is it that this is kind of like we talk about the Texas issue? How is the fact that, that we are fastballing toward a referendum on Texas independence, not front page news, headline news, every single solitary day, uh, you know, and, and 24-hour news coverage? How is that? How is how is that possible? But even if you don't like the text issue, you go, yeah, yeah, whatever on that. How is this that that this came out in a congressional committee? How is this not wall to wall news coverage? Either they have an agenda, or they're stupid. That's it. Those are your options, because. Look, if I can find this information, anyone can, right? I mean, that's just the bottom line, and that includes some of these uh, people who are reporters. So, look, guys, uh, we knew it was happening. I'm not asking you to change anything that you do. 
I, I take the 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 John Hancock approach. If I'm going to sign this Declaration of Independence, I want my name to be the biggest on the page, right? I, I want I want my profile on their platform to be so large they got to go buy extra storage space, right? That's just the way you got to be. Look, you got to do you got to do the right thing. It doesn't matter if it upset who it upsets. Sometimes you just got to do the right thing. And, and if the right thing is saying, I want Texas to be independent, I believe in, in, in alienable God-given rights, you know, I, I believe in, in a strong, secure border and a sensible immigration policy, and, and I believe that uh, the federal government and, and world governments botched the, the, the COVID issue or tried to use that issue uh, for whatever purposes, um, you know, that's just what you got to do sometimes. And, and it's, it's been interesting to see how people have reacted to this news coming out, because again, it's not news. Uh, it, it's been happening. I mean, it should be news now because no one is really covering it, but it really should be, should be wall to wall coverage. But I think again, it just proves the point that the only way that we're ever going to be a free people, the only way that we're ever going to get out from this Orwellian nightmare is to become a self-governing independent nation. That's it. That that's, that's the solution because if anyone thinks that this is, that this is new, that they haven't been doing things like this all along, maybe they just developed the technology, but don't think that this hasn't existed in some shape, form, or fashion for years and years and years. I mean, the, the Patriot Act proved that, right? They told you it was to go after foreign uh, foreign uh, extremist terrorists, right? But instead, what happened, as we found out from Edward Snowden, is they used that as a pretext to develop one of the most massive widespread surveillance systems against all of us known to man. I mean, it, this stuff makes the Gestapo look like a bunch of rinky-dink softball booster people, right? I mean, this is significantly, by orders of magnitude, more intrusive and more violative of our rights than anything uh, you could possibly imagine. Anything uh, from any government. I mean, Stalin had his secret police everywhere. And it still was not to the level or efficiency of what the federal government is doing here. But that's what you're dealing with. So don't let anybody tell you that the federal government is going to fix itself because when they gave themselves this power, they were never, ever, ever going to let you vote it out. It, this is not on the ballot. You understand that. You can vote for a president, you can vote for a congressman, you can vote for a senator, but this crap right here, will never appear on a ballot. It won't. All right. Uh, real quick update before I get to, to some fun stuff. Um, real quick update on the runoff elections. Hey, runoff elections are in full swing. Uh, we have an entire bevy of Texas first candidates that are entering into runoffs. Uh, if you go to news.tnm.me, uh, the featured article on our news site highlights who those folks are. Uh, but I've heard from several of them over the last week, and they need your help. Look, the March the 5th was the end for some folks, win or lose. But there are folks right now that are in these runoffs that back your right, your ability to vote on Texas, and they need your help. The political establishment is circling the wagons around some of these um, failed incumbents these people that don't believe in your right to self-government, and uh, and they're going to start dipping into their pockets again, right? They're going to start flooding the place with paid block walkers, and the rumors are going to start, and all those mailers are going to start hitting again. And so you have un until May. May is when those runoffs are, and these candidates need you. So I'm going to encourage you, head over to news.tnm.me, uh, check out the featured article over there with the list and go connect with those candidates. You don't have to live in their district. Now, I think one thing has become abundantly clear is when it comes to these fundamental issues, um, if your representative from your district doesn't represent you, there are people out there 
that are willing to represent you because they align with your beliefs. And so you, you owe it to them just because it's not in your backyard uh, doesn't mean that having these people in the legislature cannot have a significant impact on your life. So do everything you can, go find them and go connect with them. This, my friends, is, is fun. So, uh, and, and I've, I've really been looking forward to this. So let me, let me just run down the scenario. So in our, um, in, in our chat that we have with our, our leader, our leaders in the TNM, one of our leaders, uh, he is a, a coordinator in uh, Henderson, uh, posted a link to a YouTube video. He's like, you're never going to believe what I found uh, on YouTube. And, and so he posts this link, and it is from a channel that does these sort of scenarios for the emergency alert system. I, I'm old school. I remember it as the emergency broadcast system, but now it's the EAS. And so he does these sort of mock EAS announcements and lo and behold, I click on it. And what I see is, is a, a, about an eight minute video that deals with an EAS broadcast for when Texas leaves the union. In fact, uh, here you go. Take a look. I inform you that as of midnight, Texas has officially become an independent nation. The decision to separate from the United States was made following a democratic process, with 78% of the population supporting this outcome. We recognize the challenges that lie ahead, and we are prepared to engage in open and constructive dialogue to ensure a smooth transition. We invite you to join us in shaping a new era of cooperation and friendship between our three nations, founded on mutual respect and understanding. Texas will always cherish the bonds we have forged with our neighbors. We remain committed to the principles of liberty, democracy, and justice that have shaped our shared history. As we embark on this new journey, we extend our hand in friendship and look forward to continuing our positive relationship. Alert to all residents of the new nation of Texas. As of midnight, the state is now completely independent of the United States. Please follow the guidelines outlined in this message to ensure a safe transition. All acts of violence will be punished according to the new laws and regulations of the nation of Texas. If you are an American citizen living in Texas but do not wish to join our nation, we invite you to make your decision known at the nearest police station. You will have the opportunity to register for a visa that will allow you to stay in Texas for seven months. Otherwise, all American citizens living in Texas will automatically be guaranteed their official Texas citizenship. Your certificate will be mailed to you within the next two weeks. All other U.S. issued identification documents will be replaced by new ones bearing the new state of Texas logo within the next five months. Land borders are now controlled by the Texas Military Department. Commercial transportation is not affected by any new regulations. Civilians wishing to cross the border into our new nation will have to undergo an immigration check and will need a tourist or worker visa available at the border for $50. This visa is temporary and set up for the transition period. All United States flags are prohibited from flying in the areas. Flags of the new nation of Texas will be distributed to replace these at no charge. Please request them at your local town hall. We invite you to show respect and not to burn any U.S. flag. You may drop them off at any time in one of the green mailboxes belonging to the Texas Postal Service. These will be forwarded to one of the border crossings and handed over to the U.S. authorities. We want to inform you about the transition of certain services previously operated by the federal U.S. government to our newly established Texas nation. The USPS has now been replaced by the Texas Postal Service, ensuring the continued delivery of mail and essential postal services within our state. Additionally, the Department of Transportation has been succeeded by the Texas Transport Department, dedicated to overseeing and improving the transportation infrastructure across our great state. Furthermore, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, 
firearms and explosives has been replaced by the Texas Safety Freedom Department, demonstrating our commitment to ensuring the safety and security of our citizens while upholding their freedoms. We invite all citizens interested in joining the Texas Military Department to come forward by calling 760-706-7424. A representative will direct you to the nearest recruiting office. By joining the Texas Military Department, you have the opportunity to serve your nation with honor and dedication. Whether you possess military experience or are new to the world of defense, we welcome individuals from all backgrounds who are willing to contribute their skills, expertise, and unwavering commitment. Together, let us defend our freedoms, protect our land, and shape the destiny of our great nation. Enlist today and become an integral part of the Texas Military Department. Together, we will rise as the guardians of our proud Texas heritage. We want to inform you that in the coming weeks, there will be changes to certain government structures. We encourage you to continue living your lives as normally as possible, understanding that some processes may take longer to achieve. While adjustments are being made, we want to assure you that the government is working to ensure the continued provision of essential services. While there may be some administrative changes in the coming weeks, we are working diligently to minimize any disruptions to your financial support. We want to reassure you that the new Texas government recognizes the importance of these benefits to you and your families, and we are committed to ensuring that you continue to receive the assistance you rely on. We understand the urgency of this matter, and we aim to have the distribution of benefits running smoothly as soon as possible. We anticipate that checks may arrive a maximum of one month later than usual as we work to streamline the process and ensure that all beneficiaries receive their rightful support. The government of Texas is actively engaged in discussions with multiple world governments to seek recognition and negotiate new treaties and deals. We are committed to establishing productive and mutually beneficial relationships with the global community, aiming to secure Texas's place on the international stage. These discussions represent an important step in laying the foundation for our state's future interactions with the world, and we are dedicated to representing the interests of our citizens in these negotiations. Thank you for your attention and support during this pivotal time in our state's history. Moving forward, we commit to keeping you informed and engaged with regular daily broadcasts of important information. Your participation and collaboration are essential as we build a strong and prosperous future for Texas. To all U.S. military personnel currently stationed within the territory of the newly independent nation of Texas, we extend our greetings and respect to each of you for your service to the United States. As Texas embarks on its journey as a sovereign nation, we kindly request that you depart peacefully from our territory. According to the negotiations conducted with the United States, a corridor has been established to facilitate the smooth transition of military equipment and troops. We ask that you follow the designated corridor to safely rejoin U.S. territory. We understand the complexities of this transition and acknowledge the personal decisions that lie ahead. In recognition of your dedication and sacrifice, we would like to extend an invitation to join the Texas Military Department should you choose to continue your military career within our borders. By joining the Texas Military Department, you will be guaranteed our full support and protection should you face any repercussions or accusations of desertion from the United States Army. We assure you that Texas will fight diligently to safeguard your rights and ensure a fair process. Furthermore, as an incentive for your transition, each person who elects to switch to the Texas Military Department will be granted a bonus of $40,000. This financial assistance is intended to aid in your adjustment to the new circumstances and express our appreciation for your commitment. Please note that this invitation is entirely voluntary and the decision to join the Texas Military Department rests solely with you. We understand that this is a significant choice and respect whatever path you may choose for your future. We encourage open dialogue and are available to address any questions or concerns you may have during this transition period. Our doors are open to provide support and guidance as you navigate this important decision. After a comprehensive period of 50 days from the establishment of the independent nation of Texas, all military equipment and resources left within our territory will become the rightful property of the nation. This time frame allows for a reasonable period of transition and ensures that any remaining equipment is duly accounted for and integrated into the defense infrastructure of the nation of Texas. We 
reaffirm our commitment to the responsible and efficient management of these resources, utilizing them to safeguard the security and well-being of our citizens. Uh, okay, if that if that did not give you the chills, I mean, there, there's some information in there that's uh, obviously off, right? And, and yes, it is fiction. But, I mean, can, can you imagine for a moment, and an and interesting thing about it, so, by the way, if you bother to call the phone number on there, I think that's the Rick Roll hotline, right? Uh, so, uh, I mean, it, it, it is obviously just manufactured. It's obviously fiction. But the fact that Texas independence has entered the public consciousness enough to create something along those lines. It's very similar to what I said about the Civil War movie coming out or the fact that in the Amazon TV show, The Peripheral, uh, you know, every iteration of the future has Texas as an independent nation or the TV show Jericho or, you know, we can go on and on and on. But this is the sort of cultural drive that you see that leads to political changes. To, to quote Andrew Breit Breitbart, he said that politics is downstream from culture. And what you're beginning to see is this expression of the idea that Texas is going to withdraw from the union across all sorts of cultural mediums. And, and this video is one of them. I, I will tell you, uh, I've wa I can't tell you how many times I've watched that entire video. I mean, I've watched it a lot. Uh, because oddly enough, I, I find it inspirational. Uh, it, it almost seems as though they took some beats for the uh, for the video from our work and what we're doing, from the number of people that that support the issue to the idea of you know various uh, departments that are federal that are being you know and what department will be department here in Texas will be taking those things over. Uh, it, it is just fascinating and and honestly i could i could break down that entire video section by section and, and show how it relates to the process of texit moving forward we won't do that here because that's not the venue for this but maybe maybe i'll do a, a special live stream or something and, and we'll break it down but it is in fact uh just absolutely stunning and and, uh, and i hope you enjoyed as as much as i did now that led me, once I saw that and, and I shared it, that led me back to a memory that I had of a video game trailer that came out in 2005. And, and I do believe, I, I may have mentioned this in the text book, I don't remember, um, but there was a, a, there was a video game that was released back in 2005 called Shattered Union. And what's interesting is no one that I know that that is sort of in that sphere of of video games um really remembers the game itself what they remember is the trailer for the game and the trailer for the game and and I'll I'll give you a little overview here and then we'll you know play you the trailer cuz the narration's pretty incredible but when I went back after I saw this and I went back and I watched that trailer for Shattered Union it, it was interesting to see how they play out the scenario. It, it almost seems like the background for what they're talking about with that upcoming movie, Civil War, where you have a, a, a contested uh, election uh, that is virtually tied. And then, um, you know, you have an unpopular candidate. Then you have civil unrest and domestic strife. Then you have another contested election that has to be decided by the uh, the House of Representatives. And, I mean, it, it's just, it, and as part of that, Texas leaves the union. It's one of the things. Oddly enough, though, California is first in that one, and that upsets me a bit. I, I don't know. I'm just funny about that. But it, it is interesting. Well, and the fact that they, I, I, I seem to remember they they dressed the 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 governor of texas whoever was declaring independence they dressed him like boss hog from dukes of hazard which I, I find problematic but but beyond that it is i do believe um probably one of the earlier examples i mean there's obviously some stuff in fiction but it, it became viral almost i mean as viral as you can get in 2005 but it it started making the rounds 
Now you've got this this EAS announcement that is making the rounds. I mean, only being up there, I think, three weeks a month, it's quickly becoming one of the most viewed videos on that channel. So, uh, but let me let me just shut up. Uh, let me let me um, let me show you that game trailer. Following a disputed election and a tie vote, the U.S. Congress installs the most unpopular president in U.S. history as David Jefferson Adams becomes the 44th president of the United States. Shortly after the election, increased unrest, rioting, and a growing number of militias have given rise to ever-increasing domestic terrorism. In response, the president invokes the Homeland Security Act and declares martial law on the West Coast and other areas of the country. Though highly contested, a Supreme Court ruling sidesteps the electoral process, disqualifying popular presidential candidates from several states. Public outrage explodes when a sham election leads to incumbent David Adams accepting a second term in office. During the 57th Inauguration Day ceremonies, Washington, D.C. is struck by a low-yield nuclear weapon, killing David Adams and most of the U.S. Congress. The destruction of Washington, D.C. effectively breaks the chain of succession, sending the nation into chaos. In an emergency vote, the European Union deploys peacekeepers in the greater D.C. area to secure international interests. With separatist sentiment rising, California's governor declares home rule and secedes from the Union. Texas follows quickly and declares sovereignty, taking neighboring states with them and forming the Republic of Texas. Now, the once United States of America lie in ruin. The time for words has passed, and a second American Civil War now erupts as seven factions wage war across the land. They battle one another to reclaim a nation, to restore peace, to rebuild this shattered union. See, I, I mean, I mean, that's another one. I mean, it, yeah, the animation is very 2005. I get it, right? Uh, but, but you get the point here. Is this an example of predictive programming, right? Where, which is people talking about, well, they make these things to try to prime people and move them that direction. If we really want to get wonkish, now you start talking about this concept of a standalone complex. And I'm not going to talk about that because frankly, no one wants to hear it. But the point here is this this idea of predictive programming is essentially saying look media hollywood whoever it is they're out there putting these things in fiction um hoping to make the make it a prophecy that comes true to drive consumer behavior that direction and and i think there is a case for that in some instances but sometimes sometimes you see these things let's just loosely refer to them all as art become an expression of, of what people are either consciously seeing or unconsciously interpreting from their environment. And, and I think that these two things, uh, I, I think the art is following the lead of the people and, and not the other way around. And, and I suspect the the civil war movie may be that same thing. Now, you know the Obama the the movie that the Obamas did for Netflix may be predictive programming. Um, we don't know, but at the end of the day, Texas gets its independence in all of these spheres. So, uh, you know what we want to do is be sure that we don't succumb to any of those aspects of it, saying that there has to be this uprising or any of this crazy violence. There are ways to make this happen, as I specified when I started out by talking about what Abbott's doing about what's happening with Texas as a whole, talking about Monte Video, talking about what the TNM is doing. You know, I, I, I told a, a group, I spoke to um, a couple of days ago, I spoke to a Republican women's club in, in Yoakum. And, and the excitement there was absolutely 
palpable. I mean, they were just so thoroughly excited to talk about this idea and this process of Texas becoming an independent nation. And so there is a path forward, my friends. Look, no matter what scenarios are painted in fiction about how we get there, we know that ultimately Article 1, Section 2 says that the people have to make that decision. And we are, as, as an organization, the TNM, we are here and committed to doing everything possible to give Texans that say that they so, so rightly deserve. Okay. Well, my friends, um, that is going to be a wrap. I'm going to talk. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about some of these updates on the on the website. Um, but that is a wrap for the news. Look, we've got a lot happening in the TNM right now between uh, all of the campaigns that we have. You know, we've launched the news site. We've launched the store. Now we're giving businesses an opportunity to connect with TNM supporters uh, by launching launching sponsorships on TNM News. And uh, look, I would encourage every one of you, if you are a business owner, head over there right now and uh, and find a way that you can work together with us. Uh, the address, if you go to news.tnm.me slash sponsor, that's news.tnm.me slash sponsor. Uh, find out more about that uh, today. And by the way, there's a lot of new stuff going on on the website, whether it's the expanded about pages uh, or whether it's uh, the place where you need to go pledge your vote if you haven't done so, or exclusively for members, the research library, uh, new items. in the. I mean, there's just so much happening right now. Uh, you owe it to yourself to go over there and, and explore as much as you possibly can. And with that, we will put a pin in this bad boy. Be sure to, uh, wherever you find this podcast, like, subscribe, share, do all the good things, uh, but help us break the algorithm and spread the word uh, because this is all about you. This is all about making sure that we as a people get our say and become a self-governing independent nation. And so with that, I will leave you with the words that I leave you with every time. They're the words of Sam Houston when he said that Texas will again lift its head and stand among the nations. I believe that time is now, and the question is, will you stand with her?